What's going on? Giant Opinion Sports here. Please leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. I got plenty more draft profiles to go. Probably got a couple more offensive linemen and I'll move on to edge rushers. And just overall, this is just an amazing year for prospects coming out. This should be fun. Also, I'm going to try and cut down the time on some of these videos. Be a little bit more concise. Some of these videos, I'm going like 10, 15 minutes. That's just a little bit too long for me. Anyways, today we're talking about a bad man. Texas A&M's Kenyon Green. And he is an impressive prospect. He's played all across the offensive line. I think pretty much for every position but center. And I've seen a few people who have him as the best offensive lineman out of the entire class. Um, if you consider Iquanu a guard, then I would say Kenyon Green is my number two guard in the class. I don't have him rated like that, but I definitely understand where people are coming from. The kid could probably be successful at any position across the line, and he plays with an attitude, and I love it. His base is impressive, and you don't see him getting pushed backwards. Another thing I love is I think he can play really in any kind of scheme you throw at him. Zone, gap, don't really matter. He should succeed. So my last prospect, I talked about Trevor Penning and how he would miss running assignments. Now, Kenyon Green is the polar opposite. He knows where he should be. He's a very intelligent kid, great instincts. He's had problems in his pass sets, but in a run game, he is dominant, straight up dominant. So maybe not the extent of Iquanu, but he is a close second. You know, he is nasty in the run game. He stays low. He clears a path wherever he goes. He's a road grader. <laughs> now, my previous video, I talked about how bringing in a player like Iquanu can be a culture shock to a team. I feel the same way about Kenyon. You know, he's going to bring great effort, number one, and just a killer mentality. He wants to enforce his will. And outside of Shane Lemieux, the Giants haven't had guys like that probably the last decade. So I should probably get some negatives out of the way. Kenyon is such a powerful guy that he tries to put the death blow on a defensive lineman a bit too often. Defenders that are good with their hands will make you pay if you don't hit your spot. Sometimes on his jump sets, he wasn't patient enough at times, mistimed his punch, even leaned once in a while, which you've seen with Andrew Thomas. You really want to make contact on your second step, ideally, in your jump sets. I saw him quite a few times take one step and just fire. So I think he's going to have to learn to be a little bit more patient, which isn't easy when you're looking to finish players every snap. And as Giants fans, we've seen the same kind of stuff with Shane Lemieux, which has killed him in his past sets. Now coaches will beat that into him, though, I think. You know, the, the good news is, more often than not, he stays square and he's got good timing. And that's where you really see his best traits. You know, he has a powerful base, great bend, which I always like to point out. It is so important. <laughs> He has a great anchor. It's hard to get under him. You know, you're not, you're just, you're just not gonna push this guy around. His pad level is low, which to me is the thing I like the most. You know, his combination of pad level, strength, intelligence, bend, and flexibility, and explosiveness makes him a great guard prospect. I think one day he could be an all pro. The potential is there, in my opinion. And I think what's been a big help to him is moving through every position on the offensive line. You know, he knows what the guy next to him wants to achieve. So it's not only an advantage to him, but it also helps the guys around him as well. It's completely possible by the time the Giants first two picks come around that Iquanu and Evan Neal is off the board. Shit, it's possible Charles Cross is gone. All these guys in front of the Giants, they all need offensive tackles badly. So I wouldn't be shocked if the Giants reached for Kenyon Green. You know, would the team be criticized for taking him at five or seven? Most likely. But ask yourself this. If Kenyon Green is an all-pro offensive lineman in two to three years, who's going to care at that point? The potential is there. I love the kid. I love everything about him. And I think every all of his weaknesses are really coachable. There's no big red flags that come at me. And I've seen him mock a lot at 24 to the Cowboys. I suppose that's possible. I just see him going in that 50 to 20 area right now. That's before a senior bowl. Maybe if he doesn't test good and he has a bad senior bowl, maybe he could go back into the first, top end of the second. That would be shocking to me. Very shocking. So I wouldn't count on that. The Giants view him as a guy, a plug in and start guard. Take him. Just take him. And I also wouldn't be surprised if the Giants trade back that seventh pick 
I'll jump back somewhere. I've been saying the Vikings, that's what I got my eyes on. And at 12, I'm completely fine with taking Kenyon Green right there. Get your guy, get him in the building, and let's start building for the future and get this offensive line fixed and squared in the right way. Please, please do not let this guy fall to the Cowboys. I can't. I do not want to play against this guy for the next 10 to 15 years. Hell no. Listen, this is a bad man. He's got that nasty streak just like Iquanu. He wants to put you down. He wants to hurt you. He wants to show you how strong he is. And he wants to dominate you. So I like that kind of attitude. It's the way I played when I was younger. Get this man in the building somehow. That's it for me. I'm about, I'll probably, I think I'm going to do Tyler Linderbaum. Maybe I'll do one more tackle slash guard prospect. And then I really want, I'm going to get to them edge rushers because there is a few that I really want to talk about. Some exciting players, as people will call them, generational talents. So, oh, geez. But that's it for me. Like, subscribe, and peace.